For more, let me turn to Arthur Dung. He's a teaching professor at the McDonough School of Business at Georgetown University. Professor, as our reporter Sally Patterson touched on some of the economic implications, this bridge in Baltimore that collapsed uh, carried thousands of trucks. Um, thousands of trucks travel on this bridge every day, carrying about $28 billion in goods. So in your opinion, sir, what is the most immediate impact from this disaster? Thank you for having me on. There certainly will be a significant amount of local impact in that this artery that serves the city of Baltimore will be significantly disrupted for a number of years. In terms of the industrial impact, I would say that many of the container ships that normally would have been loaded in Baltimore are now going to be diverted to other East Coast ports, including the Port of New York and New Jersey, the Port of Norfolk, Virginia, as well as the Port of, uh, of uh, Charleston, South Carolina, as well as Savannah, Georgia. So there's plenty of port capacity on the East Coast to accommodate container ships, but the burden of this disaster is going to fall very indis uh, very sort of inordinately on two industries. The two industries that are going to be the most impacted are the automotive and vehicles industry, as well as the coal industry. Baltimore was the number one export terminal for U.S.-based coal, as well as this specialized type of coal called coke, which is uh, in high demand worldwide uh, as it serves as the primary fuel source for the steel industry. On the automotive industry, Baltimore was the destination of choice for the global uh, automotive industry, including the European makers, as well as the Japanese and South Korean makers of their vehicles entering the United States. Now, that is not going to be as easy to recover from because of the highly specialized nature of both these cargoes. Car carriers are known as ROROs, or roll-on, roll-off. They require enormous parking lots to stage these cars, as well as a highly specialized army of workers who will drive the cars on and off of these vehicles in a very choreographed manner. And so it requires a great deal of training because these cars are spaced and parked on those ships in very, very tight proximity, which means you have to be able to squeeze into, these, into the cars and roll them off. In addition to that, farm machinery, heavy construction machinery, such as Caterpillar tractors, all of these kinds of vehicles and, and implements are loaded on these row row well, uh, ships. Professor, and let me interrupt you because you may not a... have the capacity to accommodate this. No, you're absolutely right. This this story in terms of economic implication, it is so far reaching. But I just want to make sure I get some of my questions into you. What about the strain on the supply chain, which is already trying to recover supply chain issues from COVID? And then you also have, you know, attacks that are going on in the Red Sea from this war between um, Gaza and um, the war that's going on in Gaza with Israeli attacks on Hamas targets. So it, we haven't fully recovered. And then you have this, which, uh, you know, it's, it could cause another wrinkle in that equation. Yeah, I would agree with you that for certain industries that have, let's say, components that are made overseas for certain types of industrial and commercial applications, such as automotive parts, uh, this is going to present some challenges and bottlenecks, at least for the foreseeable future, until those cargoes and the logistics providers, for, uh, you know, find alternate means to divert those cargoes away from Baltimore. But importantly, it will add to the transportation cost overall for many companies that both export and import components from destinations overseas. And what about jobs, Professor? Hundreds of thousands of jobs are now at risk. What does that do to the local, econ uh, local economy? Yeah, what will it do for those workers that need those jobs, need those salaries? It's going to be devastating in the short run. As the mayor of Baltimore indicated, there are over 15,000 jobs that are directly related to this port in terms of longshoremen and dock workers, and more broadly, 100,000 workers whose livelihoods depend on the coordination and warehousing, as well as you know, logistics planning of all the traffic that flows through the Baltimore port. So it's a very significant impact. Some of these workers may be asked to move or work at other ports as other ports become strained uh, in terms of their ability to keep up with increased demand. 
but it's going to, you know, it's certainly going to impact the local economy. And I think the, the governor of the state of Maryland is trying to find ways to address this in the short term. All right, we'll leave it there. Arthur Dong, thank you very much.